Hello, prospective sixth grade math families. I'm Jackie Smith, and I am the sixth grade math tutor. Welcome to sixth grade math. A little bit about me. I have a BA in finance from Howard University. I've been married to a lovely man for 24 years, and I've been homeschooling for over 16 years. I've homeschooled three sons starting in kindergarten and working our way up. Um, I've graduated two of them, and they're both attending four-year colleges. I have one more at home that I'm homeschooling, and um, at the end of this year, he'll be a rising eighth grader. My passion for math um, started in fifth grade. I had a really hard teacher, but I learned a lot. And somewhere during that class, uh, the, the concepts for math just clicked, and, um, and it started to really make sense for me. Um, since then, I've really enjoyed um, doing math and teaching others math, um, and I have a passion for them understanding um, that connection with the math concepts and also building their confidence in doing the problems. A little bit about the class. In this course, your student will build on previously learned skills and master more advanced concepts. So it's really important that um, your student has successfully completed fifth grade math before they come to um, this class. Some of the concepts that we'll be covering are fractions, decimals and percents, graphing, six digit subtraction, four digit multiplication, six digit um, long division, um, square roots, greatest common factor, least common multiples, scientific notation, one two step equation solving, and word problems. So you may think, be thinking to yourself, Miss Jackie, what should I do with my student over the summer before they come to your class? I will always say, review their math facts. That is one of the most important foundations um, for this class, is knowing those math facts. And the reason is, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out what seven times nine is when you're trying to multiply fractions or mix numerals or reduce. Those need to be um, something that is they already know and they're very quick um, to be able to figure out because they're going to be tackling um, harder concepts. And this is something that they can already um, have solidified um, before they start the class and will greatly, greatly help them, benefit them in this class if they know those math facts really well. And it doesn't have to be boring or drudgery to learn these math facts. Buy a couple board games where they can do math facts while they're playing a game, while they're trying to beat, win the game and beat you. Um, they won't be thinking about um, how, uh, about the, the um, drudgery of learning math facts if they're having fun playing a game. You can also adapt games. I've made up games like hopscotch. Instead of just landing on a number, they land on a math fact and they have to figure out the math fact before they can jump in that box. So you can adapt games too that's in a way that they can learn their math facts um, using UNO cards. Um, um, or regular cards to do uh, like uh, multiplic multiplication. You flip the card down and whatever cards go down, they have to, the first person that multiplies them and gets the answer right, gets to keep that those two cards. Just something really simple that they, um, they're practicing their math facts and they're having fun. And that's the best way um, that I have found that learning, uh, teaching math facts can then be um, solidified um, in their memory. Okay, so there's two required books um, and one optional book for this course. The two required are, of course, the student workbook one and two. Um, you can see the, the book and the ISBN, ISBN numbers there. The teacher guide is optional, but I kind of recommend it. <laughs> I'm going to go into more about that um, as we talk about the class expectations. So hold that thought on that one. Class expectations. So we'll cover about five lessons a week um, in the class. In the beginning, the first quarter, we may do six lessons because those first few lessons are review. So we should be able to move through those a little bit quicker. And then as the um, concepts start to get more complex or something they really haven't seen before, we'll slow down to about five a week. 
Typically, I require um, one homework per week, so that's one lesson per week. So if you do the math on that, I'm assigning five lessons and I'm taking in one homework. So that leaves four lessons that I'm not looking at. So now we're going back to that teacher guide and that's where the teacher guide comes in, help, comes in helpful. Um, you as the parent can review those four lessons with the teacher guide helping you um, to make sure that your child is understanding the material, you can see where they are in their progress, and you can assist them if they're not understanding something or you can always shoot them my way as well. But that's where that teacher guide comes in handy um, for you um, in assisting your student. The quizzes and tests that we'll have in the class will be made by me. So we won't be using the tests that are in the student workbook, um, but I use it as a guide when I make up my tests. So if you look at test one, I'll use the same concepts, but I won't use the same problems most of the time. <laughs> but I won't use the same problem most of the time though. Um, and same thing with test two, test three. So I'm grabbing what we're, because we're, we're covering the book in that same, um, same kind of pattern. Um, so I use the same concepts, but I just basically change the numbers is what I do. So we'll have two projects during the year. Um, the first project will be uh, kind of overlaps. It goes from quarter one, due in quarter two, and then the second project, same thing. We'll start it in quarter three and we'll finish it in quarter four. Um, so the projects are meant to be fun, but they're also meant to use the math concepts that um, we have learned um, thus far. Um, so the first one is like a holiday related one. Um, and the second one is a mystery one. <laughs> Um, but I think they're fun and I think the kids enjoy them. And so, um, um, but it also gives them an opportunity to apply the math that they learned in real life situations. And I think that's um, really important. They're not just learning how to do the problem, but how they apply it in real life. Um, I use Google Classroom as a platform um, and that's what we'll be using all year to communicate, to distribute work, and to collect work. I just find that found that this year worked really, really well with doing that. So I want to continue that in um, the next year. So we'll be using Google Classroom um, a lot to um, communicate, um, you know, the assignments, due dates, all that is in there. I also, if we ever go, if we're online, I'll put the class recordings on there. I'll also will put material like resources, like this is how you do long division. And I might have a sheet on that and I'll put that under class resources so they can always have access to that information. In terms of um, students, um, being prepared would be having that student book. It's really important that they have that student book the first day because we are hitting the ground running. So that first day they need that student book. They also need a notebook with paper in it. Why do I need to say that? But I actually did need to say that this year. Like you need a notebook with paper in it <laughs> so you can take notes. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but this is when they'll really start to take notes for math. And then from here on out, that's just going to be a skill that they're going to need to have. So in addition to learning math, the note-taking skills, um, they're going to start to learn and, and um, solidify um, because we're going to need to take notes in class. They're going to need to take it from my lecture. So they need to, they're going to have that practice of, as I'm speaking, taking notes. So I'll provide them with notes as well, uh, but not every single time. So they're going to need to kind of learn to, to build that skill up. And that's a good skill for them to have. So we'll start that as well. In terms of completing the homework, again, I told you I would have one homework per week due. Um, but there's also those four in-between. I call them in-between assignments, those four assignments that I'm not collecting, that I am assigning, though. Those are really important. important. In general, homework um, is where the learning process begins. So Horizons is a spiral uh, type of curriculum. And what that means is um, the first few, first few activities on a lesson will be primarily the new material that they've learned for that lesson and maybe a couple prior. And then the remaining is review. So they always go back to old concepts that have been taught to kind of keep it fresh in the child's mind and the student's mind. So doing that homework and on a consistent basis, 
even the homework that I haven't uh, designated as being handed in um, will be very important to your child's development. So it's important to do those, um, those in between and the hand in homework. Now I will say this, um, you don't have to do every single problem on that homework that does not have to be handed in. I call it at home homework. So you don't have to do every single problem. It, in, and I say that though, um, in reference to the concepts that your, child's know, your child knows well. If it's multiplication and your child really knows their math facts and they just, they can whip through that multiplication. When it shows up on a homework, maybe they do one just to keep it fresh. They don't have to do all six. They just do one of those problems. Um, same thing with long division. Um, if they know how to do it, and there are actually some students that really do long division well. <laughs> That's a tough concept right there. Um, but there's some that actually love long division and they do it very well. So they don't need to do, you know, seven problems on long division. Maybe just do one um, and then they can go on to the next activity in the lesson. Okay, so it's just about making sure with those in between, especially the, the review um, problems that are on the lesson, that they're just doing enough so that it's refreshed in their mind. They, they're, they know how to do it. And um, it's just it, um, it, it's just a constant reinforcement. And like I said, they don't have to do all of it if they know how to do it. Those new problems though, they probably should do all their problems. And the ones that they're struggling with, like if they're struggling with adding fractions, they need to always do that because how they get better is do, attempting the problem, making mistakes, figuring out what they did wrong, correcting it and trying it again. So, uh, so in terms of problems they're struggling with or the new material, they probably need to do all of those problems. Again, I recommend the math facts. I cannot stress that enough, um, how important that is to know those math facts. So in addition to the um, doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, learning those math facts, um, especially with multiplication, knowing when they learn those math facts, they'll start to learn like the factors that are in that number. And that's really important for our level of math to know that in six, um, we know that two times three is six, but it's also important to know the factors of six, which is one, two, three, and six. Know the factors of 12, which is one, two, three, four, six, and 12. It's really important. So when we get to greatest common factor in reducing, finding the least common multiple, knowing that information will really, really help them. And parents, um, what would be helpful for your student and for me is to make sure they complete that homework on, on income, and the, especially the ones that's handed in complete and on time. How, why that's important is, um, again, it's the reinforcement. And on time so that they're staying up with the class. If they're handing in a homework four weeks late, we've already moved on to so many other concepts and they build on each other. So if they're handing in homework and they're not really understanding, say, uh, greatest common factor, and we're already reducing and doing this and that with you know mixed numerals, then they're gonna not understand that concept because they didn't understand the greatest common factor. And that lesson was 10 lessons ago. So it's important to complete the homework to um, stay, stay on top of it, be on time. And parents, you can do that. You're the ones that can stay on your student to make sure that they're completing their assignments and um, submitting them on time and also doing that in between work. So they're getting that constant practice and that constant reinforcement. And also communication is the key. So I know sometimes, you know, students get stuck and maybe they don't wanna speak up in class because they're a little shy, but that's where you step in parents and you let me know, you know, so-and-so is not understanding how to do long division. Um, I, they're struggling with it. Do you think maybe you could help them or, um, or maybe, you know, um, we could talk about it in class because there may be most times there's more than one person that's stuck on the same um, concept as someone else. So we can always do that in class, but I might not catch everything. And, but you parents, you're with them every day. I'm there with them two hours a week. So you see a lot more than what I see. So um, keep the, let's keep the lines of communication open so we can assure that we're getting, uh, we're doing the best for your student and they get the best possible outcome in terms of their learning. And finally, that is sixth grade math in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email to that 
um, email address you see on your screen, jsmith at extendhomeschool.com, and I'll be happy to respond. I hope you enjoyed this overview, and I look forward to the next school year. Take care.